Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of Little Talks with Big Nikki. I am your host, Big Nikki. On this week's episode, we're just going to be talking a little bit about all the love I received for my birthday, um, how I was an Instagram hottie on The Alan Cox Show, and this guy making weird moves on the beach. So stick around if you want to hear about all that fun stuff and more. Roll intro. Hey, this is Little Talk, Big Nikki. All right, everyone, I hope you are doing well. Thank you for tuning back in for another episode this week. I am so excited to have you guys uh, listening to the podcast. We are officially on pretty much every podcast platform you can imagine. We are on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and Spotify, iHeartRadio. It's just all the above, you know? So really cool um, to be on all those platforms. Uh, YouTube, as always, I am on YouTube. Um, So find me on anything. Um, Subscribe, give me a five-star review, like, comment, you know, let me know what's up. Hit me up, let me know. Uh, Appreciate you guys listening. Um, If it's your first time here, I am your host, Big Nikki. If it is not your first time here, then you are an OG. Not really, I don't know if you are or not, but I appreciate you listening. Whether you listen every week or you are brand new and just found this. So getting into the podcast today, when I am filming this, I it is actually my birthday today, the day I'm filming this. It'll come out, you know, of course, a couple days later. Um, but I have received so much love for my birthday. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to everybody who has reached out to me in some way my phone has been blown up non-stop which it's it's so nice of people text messages dms comments on instagram facebook timeline comments on facebook just the whole the whole thing so um very appreciative of everyone um who shouted me out posted about me said something sweet uh told me happy birthday love you guys um and appreciate it what's so crazy is when it comes to like birthday love that you get from everybody, uh, you <laughs> you start to kind of get overwhelmed. Like throughout the day, you're like, oh gosh, I have to like address all of these people. And it gets to the point like the later in the day it is, probably the less I'm gonna do, unless you're someone that's like super, super close with me. Um, like on Facebook, instead of like, commenting back to everyone like oh thank you so much thank you thank you thank you i'll just like love it or like it and just leave it i'm i promise i'm so sorry this is not like it's it's nothing personal against anybody it's just hard for me to like keep up and it, it just becomes like a lot to like just keep saying like thank you and i feel like a love or a like like that's why it's there because that means like thank you without like me having to to say it 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 just becomes a lot so um i i start doing that the later it gets in the day but um super cool uh you know like i said everyone who said something to me today i appreciate it no matter how i responded i want you to know i appreciate it i feel very loved and um people who i Some people off of Facebook, like, that I don't even know I know or I don't even know that I'm, like, friends with, they, like, comment. And I'm like, oh, yeah, like, we are friends on Facebook. Like, I never talk to you. But thank you for telling me happy birthday. Thank you. Um, So it's just kind of funny because I'm like, oh, yeah, like, thank you, like, for thinking about me and, you know, taking the time out of your day to say something. Like, we don't even ever talk. So that's cool, I guess. Like, hey, I'll take it. I'll take the love. Um... But then, and then some people, you know, that you do know and you are kind of friends with and like, but you don't like talk all the time. And then it's, sometimes it's like shocking to me who does comment, you know, on like Instagram or whatever. Like some people today commented, I wasn't expecting that. I was like, oh, oh, thank you. Like we haven't talked in months, but good to know you still like me, I guess. Birthdays are like, I'm not like a big like oh a birthday is a big deal because it's a birthday I really like and appreciate birthdays because I think it's like the one time out of the year if you're not like a mother or like a father and and you know you don't have mother's day you don't have you know father's day 
birthdays are like really the only time of year that like it really is to like celebrate you and I think that's like what I'm appreciating more is I'm getting older I talk like that I'm only 22 but I'm saying like I, when you're a kid it's all about like the parties and you know the gifts and stuff like that and gifts are not high on my love language they're actually the lowest so I I could really I appreciate when people get me things but I would much rather have like a a handwritten, you know, like card, like expressing, you know, how you feel about me or a text message or something like that. I, I appreciate those a lot more um, than like physical gifts. Um, I still like getting things, of course, but it's, I don't need it to feel loved. So yeah, like anyway, when, as I'm, as I'm getting older, it's, I'm more appreciating the fact that, you know, it's, it's like a celebration of you as a person. It's like, the one day out of the year that people have like the opportunity to kind of express to you like what you mean to them. I mean, and like they're again in a like relationship, um, you know, like romantically you have like an anniversary or like um, Valentine's Day and like you're able to do those things like periodically, but for like friends and family and stuff, you know, people don't always really talk or express you know, how they feel about you or that they appreciate having you in your life. I mean, I definitely have people who do that. I'm not, my close friends are listening. Like, I know that you appreciate me and a lot of you do tell me that on a regular basis and I love you and appreciate you for, you know, expressing that to me. But I'm saying like, this is like the one day where it's really like, everyone's just like, oh, like I'm happy that you were born. I'm like grateful that you were on this, like that you were, no, that you are on this planet. I hope I'm staying here for a little bit longer. I'm, I'm not quite ready to go yet. Um, but I th it's just n it's just nice. I'm, maybe it's like that little narcissistic side in me that I've talked about before. Um, I think some people have it more than others, but I, I like being celebrated. And I, I, I mean, I like, I mean, who doesn't like a compliment? I mean, everybody, you know, again, at the end of the day, everybody just wants to feel loved and respected and appreciated. And for me, it's like, this is like my day to feel that from people um, who are close to me, who maybe I don't talk to, you know, a lot or people I don't talk to ever. And it's just nice to know people like recognize that you're here and, you know, they like you. I, I would assume they like you if they're telling you happy birthday. Um, and they just, you know, are wishing you well and like a good day. And it's just like a nice feeling to have that. And I feel like, especially within the Corona time, I've been kind of like blase, blase, blase. I don't know. I don't know what the word is. One of those words. I've been, I've been lazy is what I'm trying to say with wishing other people happy birthday because Corona's just been like a whirlwind and I don't even know what day it is, let alone what week. And I'm like, oh man. And now I'm like thinking, I'm looking at all these people. I'm like, I didn't even tell you happy birthday. I should have, I feel so bad now. It's like making me feel guilty. It just makes me feel like a bad person that I didn't, <laughs> you know, like reach out to these people. I'm like, oh my gosh, like they're saying these, things to me and like being really sweet to me and it's like what did I do for them on their birthday and I was like I didn't even say happy birthday let alone get them something or I'm just like man now I, f I feel bad so I, I need to do better like going forward like okay you know and isn't it weird too I feel like we get this from like a young age when it comes to birthdays where it's like well, Susie didn't invite me to her party, so I'm not gonna invite Susie to my party. And like, it carries over into adulthood because now we're all like adults and it's like, well, um, you know, I don't know. I don't even know what name to make up because then if I, oh, okay, I don't really know a Sophie, I don't think. Okay, so let's go with Sophie. I don't want anyone to think I'm like talking about them. I'm really just trying to talk about a name, but it's like, Oh, well, Sophie didn't tell me happy birthday this year, so I'm not gonna tell Sophie happy birthday on her birthday. And that's literally how we operate. Everything is, you know, I had a podcast about this a while back, like about reciprocity, like everything's just so reciprocal. It's like, if you do this for me, I'll do it for you. And the same is like kind of with gifts. It's like, oh, they got me like a gift for Christmas. So like, I need to get them a gift for Christmas or, oh, they got me a gift for my birthday. So now I need to get them a gift for their birthday. Um, you know, or I invite, or she invited me to her wedding. So now I need to invite her to my wedding. It's just like, 
a constant like reciprocal thing um not saying that that's like the only reason like obviously there's people that like get you gifts because they like love and care about you but i feel like eventually you get into this cycle where it almost becomes like i'm getting you a gift because you got me a gift and then i'm getting you a gift because you got me a gift and it's just like a repetitious thing which is fine it but this is the way like our society kind of just functions and like that's like the societal normalcy of like what you're supposed to do um you know it's just like what you do like if you go to like a shower of some sort you're supposed to probably like bring a gift or like a wedding like you're supposed to probably get them something like this is just like what people do it's like what's expected because then it's like if you don't then they're gonna be like oh well she, like they didn't get us anything you know and then it's just kind of like you're like on like the the weird like list where you're not like blacklisted but you're just kind of like eh, like right there in the middle like well they i mean they came and they were great but like they didn't get me anything that was kind of weird like do they not know like this is what we do i don't know it's just funny how people think um but getting back to, you know, birthdays, uh, it definitely <laughs> changes, you know, th your perspective as you get older on, like, birthdays. And again, it's so much not, wow, I can't talk. It's not so much, um, you know, me being like, oh, what did I get as a gift? But it, it's like, you know, who am I spending my time with? Who's, like, showing up for me? Who's who's saying, you know, happy birthday to me, you know, what are people saying about me? That's the thing too, is like, and, and again, this is not supposed to be like me saying I'm the greatest person on earth because I'm definitely not. And I definitely have a lot of flaws, but it's, I think it's like almost like a nice period of reflection for you to be like all these people like love and care about me and like me and think that I'm like a halfway decent human being. Um, and so like, I must be doing something at least partially right. You know what I mean? Like in the in the way I carry myself or in the way I treat people, like I, I don't think I have such a great group of people around me by, you know, accident. I think it's definitely like, like God, you know, brought them into my life in various ways, which a lot of them are very cool. Um, so it's like, you know, it, like God brought them in, but it's also like, why why are they sticking around and it and i and i hope you know it would be because as much as like they give me life i like bring them life as well um and i think for a lot of my close relationships that's that's how it is and um but i think that that's like a really nice thing to just kind of look at and be like okay like with the birthday thing like okay what could i do better on i could probably like tell more people happy birthday um just you know, to be nice and to be, you know, like uplifting because I know how good it makes me feel when people tell me happy birthday. So like, can I do that for somebody else? Um, and also, you know, like just, just the, the feeling of, you know, like, okay, I, I, I must be treating people good for people to treat me so good because at the end of the day, like that's kind of is like the system of things is like, reciprocity because like you're not usually going to say all these nice things to someone who you don't respect or you don't like or you know you don't have to be mean to that person but usually you're not gonna like go out of your way to be super sweet and loving if you know it's not like a mutual thing um between both parties so it's just nice to know that like I feel like I'm maybe doing something right. Do I have a long way to go for self-improvement? Absolutely. Do I have flaws? Absolutely. Um, but it's nice to know that I'm loved and cared for. And I would like to think that it's because I do my best to love and care um, for others. So that's really nice. And another thing just <laughs> about birthdays, which I this was brought to my attention. So for those of you that haven't heard me talk about before, um, there's this podcast, Black With No Cream. Um, and it's ran by um, Ben Haggerty, and he was actually um, one of the videographers um, for not only Beyonce's Coachella performance, 
um, but also for On The Run Tour 2, he did like a ton of video um, for her and Jay-Z, and I mean, still has done projects for her. I think when her Adidas line launched, he was on that too. Um, but really dope guy, super down to earth, just wants to help other creators, you know, like blow up and like do the best they can do and break into whatever, you know, avenue they want to pursue. So he started this creative community and this podcast to like bring us all together, which is super dope. There's people from all over the US, all over the world in there. Um, we have a group on Facebook and he uh, just started recently like this text messaging, but it was only like for so many people, like you had a limited time to like, you know, give him your number and like he can like text you directly. So I think, you know, as part of the thing, like I had to put my birthday in him. And uh, so he knew it was like my birthday today. So he like sent a text out, which was super nice um, of him. I'm sure it was other people's birthdays too, but still just like the thought of, you know, sending sitting down, writing message, sending it out. It was very much appreciated. And especially for someone who I look up to so much um, as a, a role model in terms of like my career path, um, that was super nice of him. And I texted him back and I was like, you know, looking forward to like more learning and growth. And he was like, absolutely. Like keep, you know, crushing it, keep like creating. Um, and, but he said in there, he was like, you know, I, I'm sure you've accomplished a lot, but you know, this past year kind of like to reflect, but then he said like, you know, you should write out like a goal or several goals and like put them on your mirror, like, you know, put them somewhere. And he was like, and make sure in the next year, like you work to achieve whatever those goals are. And I was thinking about like both of these things because I'm not really like a goal person where I like sit down and I like think about this stuff. I'm just kind of more like in my mind, I know what I want to happen. I don't always need to like verbalize it or write it down and I still try to make it happen. And I feel like so far that's been working pretty good for me. Um, I'm just not like a big like, I don't want to say I'm not goal oriented because obviously I have goals and I orient myself in a way to try to reach them, but I don't there again, like try to manifest them by like writing them down or like saying them all the time or telling people like all my, you know, plans and ideas. Um, but then I was more thinking about like the reflection part of like, what have I accomplished in the last year? And I realized like this concept, I might again have said something like this similarly before, but it's like, just be proud of yourself. Like, I feel like I've been so hard on myself the past couple months, like with Corona, because it's like, I'm not doing what I want to necessarily be doing. Like, I'm not where I want to be at, like specifically. And it it just makes it like (laughs) kind of difficult to like remember, like, you know, how far I've come. And, And, you know, my message to you guys listening is just you be proud of yourself. It is okay. There's like a difference and there's like a fine line between like confidence and like cockiness and you can be proud of something you've done, but still be humble about it. Um, and know that you still have a ways to go and you still have learning to do. Um, so I think for me, like, I was just like, yeah, you know what? Like 2020 was, has not been the year that I thought it was going to be. Um, it's not looked like what I thought it was going to look like. And I'm not doing right now what I thought at this point I would be doing, but that doesn't mean that I haven't accomplished a lot. And that doesn't mean that I can't keep accomplishing things. And it's just one of those simple, like examples visually to me is this podcast. Like, I think I've come a long way, like quality wise and, you know, using this new anchor platform now. And like, I just... I'm like getting my like my stuff out there and like more and more people are like actually recognizing like what I'm trying to do and um, they can, you know, even if they don't listen every week, they can at least respect that this is like what I'm doing. Um, And it's hard some weeks to come up with, you know, content. I'm like, what am I going to talk about? Like people are expecting me to put stuff out um, and that's only going to grow the the pressure behind it, the more of an audience I have. But Um, this is like preparation season for me, I feel like, um, cause hopefully one day I get big and blow up, but you know, you never know. Um, but I think it's just so I'm like, you know what? I am proud of myself. Like I am proud of like 
that I'm being consistent as much as I can and I'm doing all that you know I can do to make this the best I can with the money I have to work with right now and um, the the listenership I have right now like I'm 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 proud of myself and I I think it's it's not only okay to do that I think it's good to do that especially like I said when you've been in a season like me where you kind of been like down on yourself or like I'm hard on myself anyway because I'm a perfectionist but when you you know are just focusing on like oh well like this is what I'm not doing but I want to be doing um and then you know just remind yourself of something though that you have done that you never thought that you would be doing or something that you improved upon and you're like you know what but I am doing a lot like I feel like I'm not doing a lot I feel like I'm not where I want to be but I am doing a lot and I'm way farther ahead than I was six months a year ago um yeah so that's like my my little birthday spiel um I guess if you want to call it that um just you know thank you for all the love um that was given to me by everybody I appreciate it and yeah I'm excited for 22 and what this (laughs) next year of craziness is gonna bring me um hopefully just putting out more content getting better at my crafts and uh, hopefully just doing more work, meeting more people, making more friends, making this world a better place. Um, Yeah, so that's that's gonna be 22. Hopefully we'll check back in a year and see what happened, I guess. Uh, Have a little reflection period. So another really cool thing that happened this past week was I was asked by Bill Squire, who uh, is a co-host on The Alan Cox Show on uh, 100.7 WMMS. And um, for those of you that don't know, I worked slash work for um, iHeartRadio Media here in Cleveland. Um, I'm furloughed right now um, because of coronavirus, but... uh, I w- am, was, <laughs> so hard, uh, on their promo team, um, doing part-time promotions for them. So that's kind of how I met um, Bill, and uh, I guess they've been having the segment on the Alan Cox show called, like, Instagram Hotties, and I kind of, like, saw him, like, posting stuff about it. I was like, oh, okay, like, I don't really know what this is, or, like, how they choose people, but I'm like, okay, like, you know, just kind of clicked through it and didn't think much of it. Um, and then... I uh, posted a photo or something like a week ago and he asked me, um, sorry guys, my hair is like so big right now. I like washed it and I haven't braided it and this is what it does, just bear with me. Um, Sorry if I look like a disgruntled cave woman. Um, But yeah, so he like messaged me and he was like, hey, like would you, you know, be interested in like being like the one of the weeks like Instagram hotties and he was like, you know, I have you like come on and like do um, like an interview and we like feature you on like the the show's um, like web page and stuff and like you get to do like this interview and I'm like heck yeah man like I'll be an Instagram hottie um, <laughs> I'm just sorry guys I'm just kidding um, but I mean it was like nice to be asked I'm like okay um, but you know he said in our interview together which is linked below Um, so please, please watch that. That would be like dope if you watch that and, you know, listen to his podcast as well. It's called the Bill Squire show. Um, a little plug and, uh, yeah, we had like a good conversation and, uh, you know, we both said like we should do this again and, um, be on, you know, either one of our podcasts and just kind of collab a little bit. But, um, yeah, it was like really cool to go on there and just talk um but like he said you know he was like you know it's not just about you know beauty he was like I I also because you know like he said that's kind of like subjective like what one person you know thinks is attractive is different than another so it's like the term hottie is like kind of you know just there but it's more so you know he was saying like to to talk to someone who's like you know in interesting to talk to um but who's also like doing things and you know um just kind of has like a cool little story about themselves to share so um thank you bill um and like i said go uh watch his podcast bill squire show um it's on youtube um i'm pretty sure just like me he's on all the platforms like with the podcast um spotify apple uh that type of stuff 
Um, but I know for sure it's also on YouTube. He records it like I do, so you can watch it or listen to it. Um, also, listen to The Alan Cox Show. Again, that's on um, WMMS 100.7. Um, if you have the iHeartRadio app, you can listen to that anywhere, even if you're not in Ohio or Cleveland, Ohio. Um, so, yeah, pretty cool. Oh, and both of our podcasts are on iHeartRadio. Duh. Um, so, you can listen to... <laughs> Ah, there we go. Um, you can listen to his podcast on there too. Um, but yeah, it was super dope that, you know, he asked me to come on and, uh, he said some very nice things, um, which I was like, thank you so much. It's so funny because my, I think one of my first interactions with him, I was working, it was like either one of the first or like the first event I had to work by myself and things were just not going well. Like not really my fault but it was just like other things that had happened and I ended up kind of like running late and I remember one of my um you know promo bosses you know she was telling me this story um you know that she'd been running late for an event and she's like it never really looks good like you know if talent's there and you're not there and you're not set up and you're not ready to go and so like this is my first time meeting this guy I don't know him and I'm already like gonna be late and so I get there and of course like he's there. I have like 10 minutes before the event's supposed to start. And of course he doesn't know, you know, why I, I'm late. Like I could have just slept in that morning. Like I think it was like a Saturday too. So just like, I was like, oh my gosh, like straight out of the gate, he's gonna think I'm like lazy or like I don't have my crap together. Cause I'm like flying in here trying to set up. Like I'm late, like whatever. So I was just like, this is not like a good first impression. I thought for sure he was gonna think I'm like, whatever. And I knew, like, obviously he's an on-air talent. And um, I knew he had like started his own like podcast, you know, outside of, you know, the Alan Cox show. And I was just like, and I think at one point I like mentioned, I like did a podcast, but this was like still before I was like even this legit, like with this setup or anything. Like I was still just on YouTube using like a crappy mic and whatever. And so I thought for sure, I was like, man, this guy's going to think I'm like just not there. He's going to think, you know, all these like bad things about me. This is like, because this is like how I'm perceiving myself you know, that I'm like not doing enough or I'm like not good enough or, you know, whatever. Um, and so like, obviously we never like talked about it. Like he never told me, you know, how he like felt. Like we just kind of became like more and more like friends after that. Like one of us followed the other on Instagram, followed each other back. I don't even remember how that went. Um, and then, you know, just kind of like talked back and forth about a couple things and, um, you know, just kind of like grew like a friendship, like saw each other in the halls, like at iHeart and be like, hey, hi, how you doing? Hi. Um, which is cool. But then it was like, it was nice to, for him to reach out. And then also for, you know, him to invite me over to be on the podcast and, you know, him like finally kind of like express like that he thinks it's cool like that I have my podcast and he's listened to some of it and he thinks I'm like kind of good at doing this and like to me that means a lot coming from someone who's been in the game for so long and who I think is like way more legit than I am um, I'm like you're on like a talk radio show that's like huge like people around here like a lot of people love the Alan Cox show um so it's just like wow like thank you it's just it, you know, when certain people tell you things that like means more, it's like weighted heavier, depending on like who's saying it, uh, that's kind of like the case with him. So like, to me, it means a heck of a lot more um, coming from him that, you know, he thinks it's like cool and like I'm doing a good job on my podcast than like, you know, my mom telling me that, you know what I mean? So um, that was just like a really cool experience. So yeah, um, check the links below. I have linked kind of like the mini article, um, but I also have linked the YouTube um, directly to the video. You can watch my, it's like a 10, 15 minute interview um, kind of conversation that I did with him. Um, but yeah, I thought like that was really cool. And it's, it's not often that I get to hear myself on like somebody else's thing, if that makes sense. Like if I hear myself, it's like, you know, me listening to the playback of this, it's not like, I'm like, oh, like I'm actually kind of like getting like interviewed and I'm like, oh, I like this. <laughs> like I listened to it a couple times today because I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. It just makes you feel like, you know, kind of like validated and 
important and you know just like that someone is taken an interest and like is asking you these questions because they want to know more about you and they want people listening to know more about you it's just kind of like a nice you know validating feeling so it was really cool so yeah shout out to bill squire is he's also a comedian i had wanted to go see him um live he performs like in some of the like comedy clubs locally around cleveland lakewood area and i uh i was like i i think i forget the nights that he would usually do but it was like every time it was just like a bad night i think i had a night class and that's why it was like every time in because i was still in college at this point of course and i was just like you know like maybe once the summer hits i can like finally go when i'm done with school but then obviously like corona happened and like i think they just started to kind of slowly open back up but it's like i still don't really want to go out but my point is is like he's also a comedian um super funny guy just super chill and nice and just easy to talk to um and yeah so go watch his stuff i know he has like comedy clips posted uh on his Instagram for sure, but I think also on his YouTube page. Um, and yeah, and subscribe to the Bill Squire show. So um, yeah, that was like just really dope thing of the week. Um, so one of the things I actually talked about on that interview um, with him was cause he was kind of like, well, okay, so you graduate high school, obviously like, or, oh my gosh, did I just say that? I graduate high school. Yes. I did four years ago. I meant to say I graduate college. Guys, I'm like filming this at eight o'clock at night. I'm a little, a little tired. May not be saying my sentences completely straight. Um, I graduated college <laughs> was the conversation. And he was like, what are you doing now? Obviously in the middle of the pandemic, like what are you doing for work type thing, career, whatever. And I, was, and I said, and like, I am, you know, announcing to you guys, I am actually being a part-time nanny um, for a family that I met through Connections at King's Church, which has been like a big blessing. The kids are great. Um, it's, it's kind of, I, I'm like trying to like feel like, I'm like, I kind of like this. Like, in it, people who know me, like I. I'm not like a huge, I never was like a huge kid person in, in the terms of like, I like kids, but it's like, I like to watch them for a little bit and then like give them back. Um, like, oh, your baby started crying here, you take it back. But it was fun holding it while it wasn't. Like, that's kind of like me. Um, but like recently, I feel like as I'm getting older, I'm like maturing a little bit. So I, you know, work in the nursery at church and um, I love, I love the babies. I love the babies. Oh, gosh, they just cure my baby fever. Um, I'm getting to watch them for that hour and a half or so every other Sunday. I just love it. Um, but like these kids are older. They're like nine and 11. And uh, I'm like, and I thought I was like, wow, that's like, that's going to be like a perfect age because they're right on the cusp of like, they're self-sufficient and they like know what they like and they know what they don't like and they can vocalize to me if there's like a problem or if they're not feeling well or like something. Um, it, but at the same time, like they're still, you know, kids, they're energetic, they wanna have fun. So I was like, that, to me, this is like a perfect age range. So um, I, you know, took the job and I, like I said, it's only um, a couple days a week um, that I, you know, nanny them. But I was like, I kind of like this because it's like, you know, part of my job is like the parents are like, please take them like places. So they're not like cooped up in the house. Like it's summer, like get them outside, like take them to the park, take them to the beach, which is like what we did today. Um, I think I got a little sunburn, but I like it. It's okay. I need tan. Um, but yeah, so I'm like nannying now and I'm like, oh, this is kind of like a cool gig because it's like, you're not at a desk. You're not like in front of a computer all day. Like, I mean, there's points with any job where it's like it can get like kind of tiring like of course you know if if there's like a problem or something and then you're, and sometimes like I feel like I'm like oh what if something comes up and I don't know how to handle it like th this is me like psyching myself out but it's like that's with any job there could be a problem that comes up and you don't know how to handle it but I was like this is like kind of cool and it's like the hours are you know flexible like you know if I tomorrow got a video gig like they would be willing to like switch days you know, if I need to like work on, f 
for someone else or do something else that day. Um, so it's just like, I'm like, this is like a good gig. And you know, like right now I'm like, this is, I think this is from God, the, the way it happened, like through the connection that happened, I was like, this is great. Um, and it's a big blessing. So not going to complain about that, but, uh, so I was, I was telling him anyway that, you know, I'm nannying now. So that, you know, being said that this is my thing. So today, actually, we went to Edgewater for like an hour in the afternoon just to, you know, let them go on the lake a little bit, swim around. They like to swim. Um, and I just laid on the beach and got a little tan. Well, <laughs> I low-key want to just keep going back to Edgewater now because of like this human behavior psychology that's just so fascinating to me and I just I love people watching I'm a people watcher I love it and I love I love being like uh this uh discress no what's the word I'm trying to find guys I'm telling you what sometimes I'm like recording this thing and I know what I want to say but I don't even know what the word is um discreet that that's what it is see sometimes I just need to think I like being discreetly nosy. Um, so like, oh my gosh, this is, I just have to share this story because I was like, I literally just wanted to like vlog or like, you know, do a segment like right then and there. But I was like, that's too obvious. I can't do that. Um, so the kids are in the water. I'm like laying on my towel and this, so there's this like woman, like three spots you know how you have like your spot when you're on the beach you like got a spot so there's, there's this like middle-aged blonde woman a mom she's there with like two girls um and she's like three spots over from me and like right behind her is kind of like this family but i don't really know what the dynamic is there's like a woman but there's like two guys but there's like two kids and i'm like okay is like somebody an uncle is someone the dad like i didn't know what the dynamic was middle-aged again guy so i see him and here again this is me like i am just watching like the whole time i hope like they couldn't see through my sunglasses because i was like trying to lay you know how like you're trying to like watch so you're like trying to sit or like laying away so like you can like look and hear and everything but you're like trying not to be like just too upfront about it so anyway so I i'm like watching and he's like looking at the lady so he goes over to like the, the cooler and he kind of like crushes like a can. So I'm like, okay, like he's drinking, he brought beer, like whatever. Well, the next thing I see is he has like a, a thermos uh, type, like a coffee mug. But I was like, I, it is 3.30 in the afternoon. Or it wasn't 3.30, it was like three in the afternoon. I was like, there is no way that there's coffee in there. So I was like, okay, whatever. So he, so the kids like that are with both of them are nowhere in sight. Like they must be at the water running around doing what they do. So he walks over to the the middle-aged like mom, the the blonde, and he's like literally first thing I hear out of his mouth, and I heard this like clear as day, and he was like he was like so are you like single? I was like bro, here we go. I was like I'm strapping in getting the popcorn i'm gonna be here for the long haul i need to see where this goes i need to see what happens here i was like oh my gosh i was like this is this is great i was just like mm. so at the same time though i was thinking like i've read these stories on twitter guys i'm still not on twitter if you listen to my last podcast i'm still not on twitter but i've heard these stories before where it's like a guy kind of like approaches a woman and another woman steps in to kind of like get the guy like off like shoot you know get out of here and i was thinking i was like am i gonna have to be that girl am i gonna have to walk over there so my brain starts going i start thinking of like these scenarios and i'm like okay like if i kind of sense that like she is not comfortable or something like and i need to go over there because like no one else is really paying attention to this as far as like i could see and I was like, if, if she needs to like get out of it, I was like, what, what do I go over there and say? And so I was almost thinking in my head of like saying like, like walking over there and being like, oh miss, like make up a last name. Hopefully like she wouldn't have told him what her actual last name is and be like, um, be like, oh my gosh, hi, like, do you remember me? You had me in class as one of your students, uh, me putting the persona onto her that she is a teacher. 
of some sort and I would like not get specific but like you know I either had her back when I was in high school or like you know in college like it doesn't matter but be like oh like you had me in class like da da so I'm like thinking this in my brain right like I'm gearing up just in case I just in case I need to like act I'm like making making the scenario up in my head so he's like talking oh, oh okay so he goes are you single and she and she immediately she's like no I'm married Dude's still standing there, like, and he keeps talking. And I'm like, bro, you already lost. Like, you're not, whatever you think you're trying to do, it ain't happening. Like, she just shut it down. Like, she's married. That's when you would go, like, in my brain, like, if I were a guy, I, listen, shoot your shot. 2020, shoot your shot. You don't know. Like, especially maybe she didn't have her ring on because they were at the beach, sand, water, you know, you don't know. But it's like, shoot your shot, but then she immediately was like, no, I'm married. And it's like, okay, so then just the the decent, like in my head, the thing that I would do is be like, okay, like I'm, you know, I'm sorry, just want to come over and ask because I thought like you were attractive, but you know, you have a nice day. Turn around and go back to what you were doing. No, this guy was standing his ground with his thermos, whatever was in that cup, and like just standing there and so she's like kind of like sitting in like I at first she was kind of like sitting like towards him which I think is maybe like why he approached her in this moment but then you kind of saw like she turned from like facing him to like sideways to him and she kind of like had her like legs up and like her arms like on her knees and I just I was like I feel like she's like uncomfortable like I could just I could just sense the female uncomfortability and I'm thinking like do I move in Like, do I go over there and, like, interject my teacher scenario onto this woman and, you know, but then I was like, maybe she's, like, okay with it. Because, like, he wasn't, like, you know, trying to do anything weird. He wasn't, like, trying to... I was, like, watching him, though, because I was like, if he tries to do something, I'm, like, going up over there. I was, like, ready to go for this mom. I was like, girl, I got you. Um, Which, I I mean, I would hope that someone would do the same for me. Like, I don't care what age female you are if you are a fellow female and like that happened to me at the beach and you're like witnessing this and i like don't look comfortable and i'm like trying to shut the conversation down and you like hear or see that like come over and like help me shut it down like you know we gotta have each other's backs ladies we gotta because these men out here they she says she's married he's still talking whatever so they're talking and i'm I'm noticing like the more they're talking i feel like she's getting like a little more comfortable because i think she's realizing like okay like now we're just kind of small talk casual which is fine like you can talk to people that's fine but I was still I was still uneasy because I knew with which intent he went over there so I'm like bro if you still try and so about five seven minutes in I I heard him again I cannot hear everything we're at the beach there are like three spots over I can't get any closer but I'm trying to like keep my ear peeled and so I hear him say something about like um because he said oh at one point he was like oh like do you have kids And she's like, yeah, like, that's, I think she pretty much says something like, yeah, that's, like, why I'm here and, like, gestured that they were on the water. And then he was like, oh, well, like, your husband, da-da-da-da, like, kind of made it sound like, oh, well, like, your husband should be here. It's, like, Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Like, he probably works, which, what are you doing? (laughs) Like, that's what I'm wondering in this moment. Like, he's a middle-aged man. Okay, but granted, in this context in this moment i'm thinking he's the uncle because i like i i said i saw this family unit with like two kids and just the way the kids were kind of interacting i thought the other guy was the dad and this was the uncle so i was like okay he's just shooting a shot whatever but then i hear them go first so i hear like even more this is like ends up being a 15 to 20 minute conversation i timed it y'all i timed it And so I hear him say something about like alimony. And then he goes on to say something like, and again, I'm only catching like phrases, like bits, but pretty much he was saying like that the two kids that were there from, this is what I gathered, were his in that he can't afford to spoil both of them because 
the the like alimony or whatever like the child support is taking like all of his money he was like he was like you know if it was like one i could like spoil one but like you know you can't you can't spoil two and then he's like and then he said something and then he and then i heard him say he was like yeah like i already had to sell my motorcycle next thing i'm gonna have to sell my boat and i'm like bro this is what are you doing like this my guy what are you doing he's literally talking to a middle-aged probably housewife maybe she just works from home i don't know her situation but you're talking to a middle-aged mother and you're still trying to somewhat shoot your shot or you wouldn't still be there talking and you're opening what we're well, not opening but you are in the conversation having the lines of like you can't spoil both your children and you're complaining that you have to pay for their needs and stuff for them. And so in turn, you had to sell your motorcycle and your boat, which last time I checked are non-essential purchases for any human being. I was like, my guy, you need to just, I was like, oh bro, just walk away. I was like cringing on the inside, like hearing this. I was like, he did not. Maybe he didn't care because he knew like she was married, like whatever. But I feel like in the beginning, he was still like trying to talk her into it, which I feel like is why her position kind of changed. And I felt like the uncomfortability, but I feel like after he kind of like gave up and she, you know, she was probably like, no, like I'm married, like da da da. And cause I heard him at one point being like, oh, well, like we were gonna go. And like, I was wondering, and I was like, bro, just, she's married, like just stop. So, but then I feel like once they started talking about just like kids or like life stuff, like she got a little more like eased up, which is understandable because you know, he wasn't trying to like still hit on her necessarily or like as directly. But he said that about like the alimony and stuff. And then I was just like, oh my gosh. So you already got a baby mama, maybe two baby mamas. I don't know if it's the same baby mama. And you got two kids and you complained that you had to sell your motorcycle. And now you're trying to get with this chick and she got kids. Oh, sweet. I was like, this is what's wrong with our society. Oh my gosh. Oh, but the funny, I'm sorry. Like n nothing really about this was funny to me. Cause I don't like when guys do this in general. Cause as a female, I just, I, like I said, I could just feel I could just feel like the the uncomfortability and just the tension kind of coming off the situation. I was like, I don't, I don't like this. But that's why I was like, I was ready to pounce. I was ready to be like, oh my gosh, hi. But that's why I wanted to tell you guys. So in this imaginary scenario I'm making up, she's, you know, a quote unquote, like teacher of mine. Like that's how I would play it off. But I hear her talking to him and he goes, oh, like, so like English, you teach English. And I was like, bro, she's actually a teacher. And I just almost wanted to laugh. But like, if I just start laughing, people would think I'm crazy around me because I was like, I was literally, if I had to jump in, was going to like act like she was a teacher. And she actually was a teacher. I don't know exactly what she teaches or like what level, but she's a teacher. I was like, man, my scenario would have worked great. So Anyway, I was there, like we were there um, and you know, the kids I was nannying, I was still like kind of keeping my eye peel on them. I was doing my job, okay? Um, they made home safe and sound, everyone's good, okay? It's just, I was I was watching, but I was listening. You gotta, as a woman, you can multitask. You got eyes here and ears here, you're, you're we're good. Um, so, but, so we were still there is my point. Like the kids were, you know, still playing in the water. I was still on the towel. And I'm, I'm gonna guess this was like a 15 minute conversation from what I can remember like looking at the time and uh, he you know I stayed there my point is like I stayed there and I was like kind of watching and listening until she like stood up and she was like oh like something like pretty much saying like she had to go and like round up the kids or something I don't know if she really did or if that was an excuse um, cause I didn't see them like come back and like pick their stuff up and leave like they were still there so I don't really know like why, you know, obviously maybe she just was tired of talking, but you know, she was just, she was nice the entire time. Like she wasn't being mean or anything. And she was just like, you know, it was nice talking to you. Um, and you know, and he was like, yeah, you too. And she just kind of like said bye and like walked her way. And like, he went back to like where their towels were set up and stuff. And I didn't see him again, but I saw her and the, you know, the two girls come back and I almost like want to go over there and ask her, but I didn't want to be weird. Like just again, out of my female brain and just be like, are you like, how did that make you feel? Like, what were you, what was going through your mind? Like during that whole interaction? Like I literally just wanted to know, but I didn't like want to be weird about it. Cause like maybe she was okay with it. Cause maybe she's used to it or 
you know, maybe she's just okay with it and she knows how to handle it. And like, that's fine too. But that that's the thing about like, you know, females, like we can't be like mean. And it's not like we just want to be mean to somebody, but it's also like, if you're not getting the hint, like, shoot, like you, you need to go, you know, like go, but you don't want to be mean. So then you be nice, but then they want to talk and then you're like, oh. like, I just, I just got, I just can feel mama. I feel it. I feel you. But yeah, I was ready. My point of my story is this guy was making moves on this mom on the beach. He was trying to like play his play his thing, which homie did not have a good opening line. Like it was not like the, oh, did you fall out of heaven? Cause like you're an angel. Like not even any of that. It was like straight up, like to the point, like, hey, you single? Hey ma, you single? Okay, he didn't say that. But this is basically what he said. And then she's like, no, I'm married. And dude still keeps talking. What is you doing? Oh. Boys, 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 boys. I don't know what we is gonna do with these men. I just I don't know. But yeah, I just had to share that story with you guys because it was a lot of twists and turns, a lot of emotions, and I I was ready to go, but I didn't know what I should do or not do or I don't know. I was just I was observing the situation. I was keeping an eye. Like I was ready to go if, if she, you know, if he like did anything weird, I was gonna like. I mean, I don't really know how much I could actually do, you know, me physically or anything, but sometimes just the presence of another person, male or female, you know, would deter someone from doing something. You don't know. And like, I'm pretty sure he was like drinking a little bit. So then too, I'm like, I don't trust you because I don't know what you're going <sighs> to. I just, I don't even know. So long story short, if you're a middle aged mom with a, you know, good body and blonde hair, well, not even blonde hair, but I mean, she had nice hair. I'm just she did blonde hair brunette hair red hair it don't matter ladies just just i'm sorry i just i apologize for the men the dads who pay an alimony and child support poor guy had to sell his motorcycle might have to sell his boat too y'all just pray for him oh sweet lord i just mm, we, got, we gotta teach these men i just Again, it's fine to shoot your shot. That was not my issue with the situation. Because maybe she was single and, you know, like, something could happen. But it's also, like, you're a dad. You're there with your kids. Like, she's a mom. She's there with her kids. She says she's married. Just, my guy, just walk away. Just walk away. Just go. Go with your alcohol in your coffee cup, I'm assuming. <sighs> just go. I don't. Mm, I have no words. But anyway, with that being said, that's basically the podcast. That's that's what I got for y'all today. I feel like I have talked a lot. Um, thank you so much for listening again to Little Talks with Big Nikki. Love that you're here. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, make sure you, like I said, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts. You subscribe on there and YouTube and give me a thumbs up and comment and like and DM me and message me and whatever. I don't even, I don't even care how you guys do it. Just do it. Um, give me all the feedback, uh, and the love graciously, graciously. Oh my gosh. I should not be allowed to do this this late. I greatly appreciate it. Um, and appreciate you guys listening. Hope you all have great weeks moving forward and I will see you on next week's episode of Low Talks with Big Nikki. Bye y'all.